This structure here is known as a Wheatstone bridge. It consists of a voltage source driving two networks of resistors. Both of them, both this pair, this uh, combination of the 3K and the 33, and this combination of the variable resistor and the 10K, are both driven with 12 volts across them. So those two paths are in parallel. Now, you'll notice connecting these two points is a voltmeter. We've learned that voltmeters ideally have infinite resistance. A good voltmeter will have a very large resistance, so that it has a very minimal, in fact, we're going to neglect the effect of the voltmeter on this circuit by saying that the resistance is so great that the current through the meter will equal zero. So if there's no current flowing through the meter, that tells us that the current flowing through, in this case, the 3K ohm resistor, none of it goes in here, so whatever, flew, flow, whatever flowed through the 3K ohm resistor will also be flowing through the 33K ohm resistor. Because the current is the same in those two, we then know that those two resistances are in series with each other. Similarly, because there's no current flowing into this point, whatever current is flowing through the variable resistor will also be flowing through the 10 kilo ohm resistor. And those two resistances then are in series with each other. Now we know from series resistances that voltage division applies. A certain percentage of the voltage of this 12 volts will be dropped across the 3K and the rest of it will be dropped across the 33K ohm resistor. So what we're going to do here is we're going to connect this circuit in the lab and we're going to adjust this resistor until the voltmeter reads zero volts. When it reads zero volts, that means that the voltage at A and B are equal to each other. So if we were to say, let's just call this voltage here that's tied to the negative terminal of our voltage supply, call that zero volts. That means that starting at zero and climbing up to A, or climbing across this voltage here, if the voltage at A equals the voltage at B, so the meter is reading zero, then this voltage jump here is going to be the same as this voltage jump here. In other words, we can say then that V sub A is equal to the voltage drop across here, and V sub B is equal to the voltage drop across there, and those two voltage drops must be equal to each other if the voltmeter is reading zero. And because they're in series, we can use the voltage divider to give us expressions for both V sub A. V sub A then will equal the total voltage dropped across here, which is 12 volts times 33. And I'm going to use the units kilo ohms. 33 kilo ohms divided by 3 plus 33 kilo ohms. 33 over 36, that's 11 twelfths of 12. That equals 11 volts. Now, similarly, we can use the voltage divider to write an expression for V sub B. That's going to equal 12 times the, the voltage across here is going to be the 12 times the 10K divided by 10 plus R. Now, again, we're using kilo ohms as our units here. Now, as we've already pointed out, V sub B and V sub A are going to be equal when the voltage here, the voltmeter reads zero. So let's go ahead and apply it and just set these equal to each other. And we have 12 times 10 over 10 plus R then is going to equal 11 volts. Dividing both sides by 11 and multiplying both sides by 10 plus R, we end up with 12 over 11 times 10 is equal to 10 plus R. Subtracting 10 from both sides, we have 12 over 11 times 10 minus 10 is equal to R, or R then is equal to 10 elevenths kilo ohms, or 0 0.909 kilo ohms, or 909 ohms. So let's go back and see what we've got here. 
when the variable resistor is adjusted to 909 ohms, the ratio of this resistor to this resistor is going to be the same as the ratio of this resistor to this resistor. And V sub B will equal V sub A. Under those circumstances, the bridge is said to be balanced. Now, let's derive a more general relationship between these resistors that will lead to a balanced bridge. To do so, let's call this resistor here R1, this resistor here R2. We'll call this resistor here R3, and this resistor here R4. Once again, using voltage division, we can say then that the voltage at V sub A is equal to, and let's call this V sub S. It's 12 volts here, but just to keep everything in symbolically, let's say that V sub A then is equal to V sub S times the voltage across R2 will be involved the ratio R2 over R1 plus R2. Similarly, V sub B will equal V sub S times the voltage across R4 involves then R4 over R3 plus R4. Once again, we set these two equal to each other. And as we do so, we see that the V sub S's cancel. And we're left with R2 over R1 plus R2 is equal to R4 over R3 plus R4. And what we, we're trying to find a relationship between R1, R2, R3, and R4 that will lead to these two voltages being equal to each other. And to do that, we're going to do a little trick. On the left-hand side, factor out an R2 from both the numerator and the denominator. So we'll have R2 over R2 times. Now you pull R2 out of the numerator, we're left with a 1. Down in the denominator, when we pull an R2 out of R1, well, there isn't an R2, so that results in there being an R2 in the denominator, or we have R1 over R2. Pull the R2 out of this, and you are left with 1. And if we're not sure about that factoring, we can always redistribute it and see if we get back what we started with. So R2 times 1 gives us the R2. R2 times R1 over R2, the R2's cancel, we're left with the R1, and R2 times 1 is R2. This trick of factoring out a, a number that doesn't exist then leads to that value showing up in the denominator. Now over here we're going to do the similar kind of thing. We're going to factor an R4 out of the numerator and the denominator. And when we do so, we have then R4 over R4. Taking the R4 out of the numerator, we're left with a 1. Taking an R4 out of the denominator, that's an R4, we're left with R3 over R4 plus 1. Now, R2 over R2, that's just 1. They cancel. R4 over R4, those cancel. And what we see here is that for V sub A to equal V sub B, when this side here equals this side here, it will be true that R1 over R2 equals R3 over R4. Or to put it another way, when R1 over R2, R1 over R2 equals R3 over R4, the bridge will be balanced. Let's go back here and look at our circuit. When the ratio of this resistor to this resistor equals the ratio of this resistor to this resistor, the bridge is balanced. They don't have to be the same values. They simply have to have the same ratios. In this case, we had a ratio of 3 to 33. That was 1 to 11. Here we have a ratio of 10 elevenths to 10, or a ratio of 1 to 11. And again, we say that then, under those circumstances, the bridge is balanced.